I'm Mary Maté sitting in for Jimmy Dore here with Misha Pollan and Americans comedian Kurt Metzger and our guest Nick Cruz, who is host and co-founder of the Revolutionary Blackout Network. And we are talking about this case, federal authorities charging four Americans, uh, four members of black revolutionary groups with roles in a malign campaign pushing pro-Kremlin propaganda. And if you read the indictment, it's just a long charge sheet basically trying to criminalize dissent, criminalize criticism of the proxy war in Ukraine, criminalize uh, criticism of, U of U.S. foreign policy, and basically accusing black leftists of being pawns of Russia, that the only reason they're critical of U.S. foreign policy is because Russia is somehow making them do it. That's the message of this indictment. Oddly, or I should not, I should say not oddly, of course, totally not unsurprisingly, liberal media outlets are totally ignoring this story, even though yeah. a lot of them c claim to care about uh, law enforcement unfairly targeting black people and racism. On this story, black people being targeted for their political views, liberal media is silent. Now, by contrast, though, some conservative and right wing voices are being critical. So here, for example, is Tucker Carlson. The latest group of Americans to find their constitutionally protected opinions become felonies are, believe it or not, an organization of black nationalist left wingers who oppose the war in Ukraine. The DOJ has just charged many in this group with seeking to, quote, sow discord, spread pro-Russia propaganda and interfere in elections within the United States. Now, there's no evidence they interfered with any election. You're allowed to be pro-Russia. You're allowed to be pro-anything you want in the United States. Saying things the government doesn't like, having unfashionable opinions or opinions that are out of step with Joe Biden's opinions, that is not a crime. You can spread pro-Russia propaganda if you want to. You can spread anti-Russia propaganda if you want to. You can say whatever you want, but not anymore. According to the indictment, the criminals in question, quote, wrote articles that contained Russian propaganda and disinformation. Huh? They also gave speeches and posted videos that annoyed the State Department. Here's one of them. There's a discussion about Russian military border uh, buildup uh, on its border uh, with Ukraine and how this represents a terrible threat uh, uh, to Ukraine by, uh, by Russia. Uh, but there is no acknowledgement of the history uh, that took us to this place, how the U.S. overthrew, uh, uh, participated in, in facilitating the overthrow of a government in Ukraine that was friendly to the Soviet Union. Nor does it talk about the history of this relationship between Ukraine and, and Russia. This is an ongoing aggression. It did not just start. It's, all, it's been going on for a while, but the U.S. government uh, uh, relies on the ignorance of, of, of the people uh, in this country and much of the world that's facilitated by people like Zuckerberg. So for whatever it's worth, we're not really sure who that guy is. We know he's American. Pretty sure that on a lot of issues, we likely would not agree with him. A lot of what he just said in that video seems to be true. But even if it weren't true, even if he was wrong, yes. it would still be constitutionally protected speech. In a free country, which we had until recently, you are allowed by definition to have dumb opinions. Most of us do, but not anymore. So that man you just saw is facing 10 years behind bars for expressing views about Ukraine that the Biden administration doesn't want to hear. So let me bring in Nick Cruz of the Revolutionary Blackout Network. What do you make of hearing uh, this message from a right-wing cable host? Nothing that I've seen so far. I could have missed it, but nothing that I've seen from MSNBC or anybody in the Democratic Party. Aaron, I, I hate <laughs> the state of our politics right now. We we live in a universe where Glenn Beck and Tug, Tug Carlson is speaking up on behalf of black leftists before Ilhan Omar before Cori Bush, before Jamal Bowman, you would think these quote-unquote elected socialist leaders, they're not socialists, they're frauds of the highest order. This is why they can't stand us, because people like Amali on RBN, we explain how uh, these black leaders, and you have my congressperson, Emmanuel Cleaver, they abandoned uh, the tradition of black radicals, where MLK, Malcolm X, Fred Hampton, we all called out militarism, they went from that, and now they are 100% in support of funding Nazis. And in order to continue to promote the idea of funding Nazis, they're going, going to ignore 
uh, this injustice on a black group that exposes their politics. This is I, I cannot emphasize how much of a general portrayal this is. From the progressive left. And I feel like there should be way more anger because why we got to look, look at Tucker Carlson and Glenn Beck to have principle, principles on this issue. I also know there's many people who support the Ukraine proxy war. And in general, any people who support the Democratic <coughs> Party, these are people who do so because they are 100 percent willing to be ignorant. So when I pay attention to the people who support these progressives who support the NATO war, they're not covering this story. Like all the big, big left quote unquote progressive Bernie channels. They aren't covering this story. They're, they're not covering the story about the massive Ukrainian money laundering and corruption. They are lying uh, by omission to people of the left. And there's need to be much more anger. On the Jimmy Dore show, you see the anger at these NATO leftists who betray us. But there need to be much more because they need to be on the front, not Tucker and Glenn. Now, the reason why they do this is a psyop that I have noticed. I'm sure you know this as well, Aaron. Where for some reason, to- Toad Carlson, Glenn Beck, Lauren Boebert, Marjorie Taylor Greene are allowed to tell the truth about a few of these things because the establishment sets up good guys and bad guys. So Bernie Sanders and AOC, who are considered the kayfabe good guys, they don't speak up about stuff like this. Meanwhile, the bad people like Toad Carlson and Glenn Beck will speak up about this. So then when, when whenever me or you, we say, oh my God, crazy how Toad Carlson is talking about this, the people on the left who supports the unhinged Biden administration, they would then turn around and say, oh, my God, Aaron, are you some sort of Tucker Carlson fan? Why are you highlighting that he's got this issue right? They only allow the bad people to get these very crucial uh, stories right to trick people who otherwise not political and they don't know which like what direction to take. So they look at who's saying what So they see Tucker Carlson saying this. So they say, oh, apparently these black socials must be bad. And that's why I think it's happening. Well, that's the point of pushing identity for so goddamn long is to make it about who's at the right lunch table. And then do you want to be out? Do you want to be at the reject table? That <laughs> yes. The entire thing's based around that. And what's actually creepy, it's not like, you know, this is, I don't know, World War II or War America is fighting. You know, the Iraq War is pretty creepy where they did with people who didn't yeah. like that war. But this isn't even supposedly us fighting. It's just us sending some, you're not even, you even have to be along for the ride with whoever we say to, even if it's not our forces supposedly fighting. Absolutely. And you know, uh, Nick, you mentioned earlier that this is the result of the Russia gate playbook where basically yeah. any ideas or, or any individuals or groups that challenge a national security state under the Russia gate playbook, as we saw with the whole Trump <clears throat> and, uh, Mueller investigation, anybody deemed to be a threat to the national, to the national security state, gets painted as a Russian agent. So, of course, the national security state is now dusting off that playbook and deploying it against the traditional targets, which is leftists, and especially black leftists. You mentioned the history of painting, for example, people like Martin Luther King as being Soviet assets. And, and it's also been uh, normalized by Russiagate because, you know, back when you had, for example, the George Floyd protests, Black Lives Matter, you even had prominent Democrats, senior Obama-Biden officials like Su- Susan Rice, going on TV and saying things like this, that somehow uh, uh, Black Lives Matter protests might have been fueled by uh, Russia and that Russia might have been exploiting the protests for its own ends. Uh, and they are probably also, I would bet, based on my experience, I'm not reading the intelligence uh, today uh, or these days, but based on my experience, this is right out of the Russian playbook as well. But we can't <laughs> allow the extremists, the foreign actors, to distract from the real problems we have in this country that are long-standing, centuries old, and need to be addressed responsibly by new leadership. You're, you're absolutely right on the uh, foreign interference, because we know for decades, the Russians, uh, when it was the Soviet Union, the communists, they've uh, often, often tied, tried to embarrass the United States by promoting the, the racial divide in our country. But what you're suggesting, <laughs> Ambassador, is that they're still trying to do that? Is that what you're saying? Well, we see it all the time. We've seen it for years and, and frankly, every day on social media where they take uh, any divisive painful issue, whether it's immigration, whether it's gay rights, whether it's gun violence people. and always racism, and they play on both sides. Their aim is not simply to embarrass the United States, Wolf. Their aim is to divide us, to cause us to come into combat with each other, to disintegrate from within. And I would not be surprised to learn that they have fomented some of these extremists on both sides using social media. I wouldn't be surprised to learn uh, that they're funding it in some way, shape, or form. 
Was she surprised what? when it turned out to be the FBI doing that? <laughs> Can we all acknowledge that she just said an unhinged conspiracy theory yeah. on the air, uncor- uh, uncorrected? I was at the George Floyd protest. I was in Kansas City. I was tear gassed by police, unprompted. There was tear. There was kids in the park, and I reported this. This was one of my first acts as a citizen journalist. The KCPD was lying, and they were saying that uh, we was being rowdy, even though we was very peaceful protest. They started chucking tear gas, and there was people that wasn't even part of the protest that got tear gas. Because it was a giant park, a lot of people came. They was upset at the police, and they lied about that. So what they were saying is, people that was attending the park, people who were protesting the police, were somehow paid agents of Russia. That is insane to say. That's insane to say that millions of people was influenced because of Russia. And like O'Malley said earlier in the clip, you can see the the disdain that liberal Democrats have for black people, Latinos, or any non-white people who do not follow uh, their direction. They will accuse you of being paid, being so dumb that you were tricked by a country that you have absolutely no lineage towards. Like, it's so ridiculous and so insulting. Well, speaking of which, here is Hillary Clinton back uh, after she lost the 2016 election, explaining how she believes that, in her words, the Russians suppressed the black vote in the swing states that she lost via their all-powerful social media posts. This is what she said. I mean, we're going to have a lot of problems. And the thing we have to do is get enough people to turn out so that they can't, you know, steal those votes through suppression in Wisconsin or convince blacks not to vote in Michigan. All the stuff that they did this last time, which was very effective. And the Russians played a big role in <laughs> in Flint. That was the Russians. <laughs> wow. I mean, it's uh, Nick. I just, it's so condescending. And this this underlines everything. The idea that black people are so malleable that they can be manipulated merely by social media posts into not voting for St. Hillary. It's so patronizing and condescending and straight up racist, but yet yeah. nobody in corporate media or in the Democratic Party challenges it. Here's one more. This is Kamala Harris sharing her conspiracy theory about the Colin Kaepernick controversy. And guess what? It ties uh, back to Russia. <laughs> so that's what they start to do. Right. That's what they start to do. They did it then. They will do it now. You know, people have said, if you look at, for example, the whole, remember the whole, the heat that ended up around the bend the knee and Colin Kaepernick. Mm -hmm. Many smart people have said it actually was not a thing. Mm -hmm. Smart people. The Russian bots started (laughs) taking that off. (laughs) You feel like you're being targeted by Russian bots now? Well, we already know we are. Oh, my God. (laughs) Who said Very it? smart oh, people, Aaron. <laughs> the, you know, the playbook, I bring it up a lot. It's not just the right. It's, it's the three W's. Women, racism, and Russia. And you pick one of those W's for why you're being criticized. Uh, Nick Cruz, final thoughts for us on this topic before we go on to the next segment. It, it's so absurd, and it shows how dumb that liberals think black people are that we wouldn't support Hillary Clinton and Joe Biden, two people who supported. One was the author of the crime bill. Uh, you had Hillary Clinton and the Clinton uh, politics in the 90s that drastically increased child poverty that mostly imp- impacted poor and black families as well. But apparently we need Russian shit posts on Twitter to convince us not to support Democrats. It's a joke on face value. We're telling jokes in Nashville, Honolulu, Los Angeles, Northampton, Massachusetts, Syracuse, Cohoes, New York, Hartford, Connecticut, Baltimore, Chicago, Rosemont, San Diego, and more. Go to JimmyDoor.com to see get a link for all those tickets. Plus, you can watch my new special. COVID lies are funny. <laughs> <laughs> 